Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to All Saints Church uh, on this uh, uh, the 14th Sunday after Trinity, and also um, thank you. Um, also uh, for uh, baptism uh, of Dominic, and uh, uh, we're really pleased to welcome the uh, family and friends today as we uh, baptise Dominic into the uh, family of God. Um, just a couple of other notices. Oh, I made that for <laughs> um, So yes, a, a really warm welcome to you today uh, as we uh, say celebrate the Holy Baptism and uh, we come to worship our God. So let's just begin with a moment of quiet. So, uh, Lord, we offer this our uh, worship of you. We offer uh, Dominic to you, Lord, as he is baptised today. May your blessings be upon him and his family. And Lord, as we leave this place, May we continue our worship of you in everything we do and say. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So yes, indeed, we do offer uh, a warm welcome to uh, Dominic and uh, his parents, uh, Vienna and Maris. And, uh, and of course, you, his family and friends, uh, a very warm welcome uh, today. Um, as you come to witness and to celebrate as Dominic begins his journey as a member of the Church of God. During the service, um, the words for everything you need will be on the screen. If you um, would say the words in white print, that would be good. Um, uh, and uh, so let's, let's start. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. The works of the Lord are great. It is mercy and joys Mary gave birth to a child and called him Jesus. He will save his people. He will be called the Prince of Peace. His kingdom will last forever. So let's hand over to our Sun Worship team. Please stand if you feel comfortable. To, um, we've got two songs. The first one thinks about the greatness of God in creation, and the second one thinks, um, puts it more personal to think about God as our Father.
rejoice today with the family of Donald as they thank God for the gift of life and as they bring their child for baptism. God, our Creator, we thank you for the wonder of new life, for the mystery of human love. We give thanks for all whose support and skill surround and sustain the beginning of life. As Jesus, you love and discipline within a human family. May Dominic grow in strength and wisdom. As Mary knew the joys and pains of motherhood, give Leanna and Maris your understanding, grace and love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ told us that to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again of water and the Spirit. And he has given us baptism as the sign and seal of this new birth. Here we are washed by the Holy Spirit and made clean. Here we are clothed with Christ. Dying to sin that we may live his risen life. As children of God, we have a new dignity and God calls us to fullness of life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you give your faithful people new life in the waters of baptism. Guide and strengthen us by the same Spirit that we who are born again may serve you in faith and love and grow into the full stature of your Son. Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We have our readings, please. to read at verse 19. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Jerusalem, the people ask? Is her king no longer there? Oh, why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods, says the Lord? The harvest is finished and the summer is gone, the people cry, yet we are not saved. I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and am overcome with grief. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician, physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? If only my head were a pool of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night for all my people who have been slaughtered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from Timothy, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives, marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Saviour, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. And I have been chosen as a preacher and apostle to teach the Gentiles this message about faith and truth. I'm not exaggerating, just telling the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Please stand. Jesus told the story to his disciples. There was a certain rich man who had a manger, handling, manager handling his affairs. One day a report came that the manager was wasting his employer's money. So the employer called him in and said, What's this I hear about you? Get your report in order, because you are going to be fired. The manager thought to himself, Now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to do this and I'm too proud to beg. Oh, I know how to ensure that I have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I am fired. He invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you owe him? The man replied, I owe him 800 gallons of olive oil. So the manager told him, take the bill and quickly change it to 400 gallons. Now how much do you owe my employer? He asked the next man. I owe him 1,000 bushels of wheat, was the reply. Here the manager said, take the bill and change it to 800 bushels. The rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. And it is true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of the light. Here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then, when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in the little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. I wonder if you've ever watched the uh, programme on uh, the BBC called Air Hunters. Uh, it's a series that follows the work of, um, surprisingly, Air Hunters. Uh, but they are probate detectives uh, looking for distant relatives uh, of people who have died without making a will. They may not have even known the deceased. Uh, and sometimes they stand, they stand to inherit many thousands of pounds. Now the reaction um, after the initial shock uh, is, um, it may be not surprising, many of them think, well at last I can go on that big holiday at last. Or others say, well I'd like to buy something that, you know, in memoriam of the person that died, even if I didn't know them. So I want you to imagine for a moment that you've just had that knock on the door and uh, by an air hunter and you stand uh, to uh, inherit uh, many, many thousands, maybe even millions of pounds, maybe it's a super rich relative that's died, um, uh, way back in time, you're related, not an uncle or aunt, I'm talking you know, second and third, fourth, or even fifth cousins. But you didn't even know they existed. I wonder what what would you spend that money on? Shout out a few. I'd give it away. Give it away. Anyone else? Yeah. Any other ideas? Any idea? What what did you do with? Say let's say ten million pounds. Alan would buy burnt down you. <laughs> Be a waste of money, but uh, what? <laughs> sorry. Okay, so I want you to imagine. Maybe it would be to buy a home, a, a luxurious home. Maybe.
Hades by the Sea. As you all know that uh, Dean and I, we were uh, up in Southport before we came here. And uh, the only thing I really, really miss uh, is being by the sea, being able to lift, walk down the, the, the shore uh, with the wind uh, blowing the cobwebs out of my head after a hard week. I do miss not being able to walk along the seaside. Um, and uh, so maybe I would Maybe I would buy a house by the sea, but then I'd miss other things. I'd miss being close to my family. One of the uh, reasons, other than I, I just knew what fantastic people you were, I came here. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what, but one of the reasons I came here was to be near my mother. My mother's 93 um, and uh, so I, I came to be near her, and I'm just an hour away now, whereas before, on a bad day, it could take at least four hours for me to get to see my mum. So it wasn't a day trip, it was an overnight stay when I came to see my mum. But imagine you bought that house. Maybe it's got its own swimming pool in it. Maybe a games room. Private cinema. Sauna, hot tub. Maybe these are things that you would really appreciate. You might even be tempted to buy a new car. Maybe a, a Bugatti or something, you know, common like that. Maybe it would be a Mercedes, maybe it would be a Bentley, Rolls Royce. You can buy whatever you want. But maybe then you are thinking about that holiday. And uh, you can go anywhere in the world that you would like. Maybe it's a nice safari holiday in Kenya. But of course you have to protect from the sun. Yes, it does rather look like a pimple on the haystack that would be my size head. So. <laughs> Maybe it's, you'd have to protect from the sun going to Kenya. And anyone just watching in from the service now will wonder why has the vicar got his sun hat? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know about the car? You've gone on holiday. You've gone to the sunshine. And maybe you've bought some nice furniture for this house. But then, you would need someone to clean for you. Oh. Sorry, <laughs> Dean, I'm sorry. You need someone to clean. First of all, Kate's by the mind. I'm sorry, but it was kept on. That's a tickling <laughs> stick, but. <laughs> But you need someone to clean, so you could, but you've got all this money, you could hire a cleaner. That wouldn't be a problem. You could have your car, you could have your holiday, you could have your cleaner. It wasn't difficult doing that. In fact, I thought of another task that you wouldn't want to do. You may want to hire a gardener to trim round your of all the hedge hedges and all your flowers so you could have all the benefits of a beautiful garden without any of the hard work. So I think that money would simply go through our fingers, wouldn't it? It would disappear. But hang on a minute. Was that money really yours to spend? I know you inherited it. I know you inherited this money, but do you really own the money? The truth is that God really owns everything in the world, including money. And in Psalm 24, verse 1, we're told that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. So if God owns the money, 
How should we think about that money when it comes into our profession? I think the best way of thinking about it is that uh, God trusts us with his money. He trusts us to use his money faithfully for the growth of the kingdom, to meet the, your needs, but also the needs of the poor, as well as, 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 well as your own. So let's think about that inheritance of £10 million once again. One or two of you said that uh, you would give it uh, away. And I think that God would want us to use that money. I'm not saying we couldn't have treats ourselves, but we could use that money to provide maybe, I don't know, um, clean water in places around the world. Have toilets. Things we just take for granted. Have a roof over our head. Because when you think about it, although, yes, we're all struggling with the cost of living increases, and you, you may be out of work, but when you compare yourselves around the world to those who don't even have running water, we're very rich. We have millions in effect. Because, I don't know about you, if we, you didn't have water, you would pay anything to get it. God might want us to give some of that money to maybe buy Bibles for parts of the uh, world that are not available. Maybe they want you to give generously to the local church. Because after all, God is generous. He will also be happy for you to spend some of that money, of course, on the things you need. But you know, the money you have, the more money you have, the greater the responsibility that comes with it. Jesus said about money, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with very much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with a great deal. Now, I'm guessing, and I could be wrong, not many of us have got £10 million in the bank account. I'm guessing. But you can never tell. I used to work in sales and uh, this rather disheveled chap came into the, uh, the office one day and uh, it was where I sold uh, garage doors. And uh, my boss, and I'm glad it was my boss, my boss went up to him and asked if he could help him, asked him what he wanted and uh, he, he was looking at single garage doors and uh, he said, oh no, he said, oh I want a little bit of a large one, double. And my boss turned around and said, well, it's not like you've got a Rolls Royce, is it? Turns out this was a multi-millionaire that he was talking to. And he did, and he not only had one, but he had uh, several Rolls Royces. But I'm guessing I can safely say not many of us have got £10 million pounds, uh, to handle. But most of us have some money to handle. Even children, if you get pocket money, maybe you've got a Saturday job. Think about how God would like you to spend it. Think about where he wants that money to go so that you can be faithful in the way that you use it. By the inspiration of the Lord, how can we spend that money? It never ceases to amaze me when I hear stories on the news of children who send, uh, that when we have these massive appeals, they send their pocket money, and it could be a pound, 50p, whatever. Their savings comes to about three pound 50. But they give it all. Think about God. Think about how he would like you to use your money. Amen. So let us all affirm together with those who are being baptised. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. 
Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This week, we pray especially for the King and the Royal Family. We give thanks for the life of Queen Elizabeth, for her witness and faith, and the example that she has set for so many. We pray for your comfort and strength for the King and the Royal Family in their time of grief. And Lord, that you would strengthen them for the years of service in the new roles that lie ahead. Lord, we pray for the funeral tomorrow, for all those who are going to be involved with that, that you would give them your wisdom and your peace. Lord, may it be a time that causes many who watch to think again about what it means to live and, and what lies ahead. And Lord, may your, may your word be proclaimed. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As we think about the many world leaders and countries that will be represented there, we give you thanks for all in our world who take on the burden of leading and directing countries. Lord, we pray for wisdom for each of them and for all who advise them, that they would lead our world to be a more compassionate and peaceful place. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We think about the world, we thank you for the beauty and diversity of creation. Lord, thank you that you have given us so much to enjoy. And Lord, we ask you would help all of us to take good care of your creation. That you would give wisdom to those who help to address the the issues that arise with the climate crisis. Lord, that we would be able to preserve your world for those to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've provided for us. For our food and clothing and hands and the money that we have. Lord, help us to be good stewards of that, of all that you've given us. <coughs> help us to be generous. And Lord, give us peace when we have concerns about when bad things will be provided. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we thank you for our families. Lord, we, we pray for all who are involved in the care and upbringing of the younger generations, for all who work in the schools, for all who provide childcare, for all who are an influence on our young people. Lord, give them wisdom and compassion in all that they do. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we remember those in special need at this time. Lord, 
we have people who are ill, people who have concerns for their families, concerns for their jobs, concerns of many other kinds. Lord, there are many that we know, and there are many that we don't know. Lord, we just ask for all of them that they would know your comfort, your healing, and your provision. And we pray for comfort for all those who have lost loved ones. Lord, those that have lost and missed me, we pray for the family of Jamie Owens and others known to us. And all those for whom the national mourning will reignite feelings of loss. Lord, for all of them, be your comfort and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we thank you that we can bring all our concerns to you. And Lord, we offer you our own needs, those things that are at the forefront of our minds at the moment, those things that we're concerned about over the coming days. Lord, in all of these things, may we know your presence and see your hand at work. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, Glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we'll do those now, please. Uh, some worship team.
God give you the grace to follow his saints in faith and love and steadfastness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Okay, if we could have the parents and the Dominics back up here please. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in the light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine the light in the world to the glory of God the Father. So thank you so much for joining us this morning for this service and uh, I do hope that the rest of your week will be a, a peaceful and blessed one. And uh, so go in the light and peace of Christ. And thanks be to God.